Winter is cold and it sucks. Here's how to make it suck a little less. This last week's been pretty rough, and I'm down here where it's warm right now for the day. Uh, I'm in the Tennessee Valley, just west of Chattanooga, and it's a little foggy, but it's pretty down here, and it's going to lighten up. Well, last Sunday, it was pretty bad. Started off, truck froze to the ground, then the wheels were froze, and then I ended the night with, with a nice gelling incident. So, we'll go over all that, show you what I did, and give you a few tips to where you can avoid as much of this as possible. We'll start off with the uh, wheel seizing up. Now, the truck freezing to the ground, that's gonna happen, there's nothing you can do about it. It was warm when I parked, there was a little bit of water, it froze. The truck popped out of it, but it took a little bit of nudging. But the wheel, on the other hand, was a different story. This set of duels right here, and uh, I had to crawl up under there and get to the bottom brake shoe down there. This is where a torch would have been helpful if you had a little mini butane torch that probably would have done it in about eight minutes, but I didn't have one, so I had to use this and then to get into the tight spots. I had to use this and then beat on it with that end. That's what you have to do. It took me two hours to get it loose. You just had to just keep tapping at it and tapping at it because there's really not any real access. And uh, But all of a sudden it was tink, 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 thunk. When I heard it pop, we were good to go. When it gets this cold, gelling up is a problem. And especially today with the blended fuels and all the biodiesel, it's more problematic than ever. And it's important to keep your truck from gelling up. And one of the things that really helps me is my fuel filter gauge. This gauge right here, this is reading about where it should be. Um, it'll go up and down a little bit by demand. But the other night it was at 10 and it would drop, but you could tell it was icing up and it got up to about 13. And uh, then I had to go out and change the filter. So we'll pop the hood. I'll show you the globe filter that I had to change. And I don't understand the, why the engineer bothered to put the filter inside a wheel well, but you'll see where it's at. And uh, so let's pop the hood and I'll show you that. Your fuel filter is in a really odd place, so this is some of the trouble I had. Some engineering nerd decided to put it in the wheel well, uh, right behind the tire, and it doesn't matter how warm the fuel is coming in here, it's getting all that cold air coming up, so make sure you got filters, make sure you check it often, and uh, if you gotta change it, make sure you have the tools to change it also. With idling, you should also check your fuel or your uh, oil regularly. Eh, needs to be changed, but it's full, so I'm happy about that. You know, if you know you don't have any leaks and your antifreeze is a little low, don't panic. These trucks all use antifreeze, so. As long as it's above the full mark, you'll be all right. You're also going to have some air leaks, like this one that's been leaking for a while. It's also important to keep your def and your fuel full, especially your def, because there's a lot of water in there, and it'll get moisture when you go hot and cold. And your fuel, too, and make sure it's treated. And if it's not treated, make sure you put some treatment in it. Ah, everything costs money. I realized I forgot I hadn't showed you the tool you need to get the fuel filter out. It's this. You 
have to have one of these to get that particular filter off. Well, you don't have to, but you're probably going to break it if you don't have one. It's got two things. This top part right here will take the top cap off, which is a, which is a non-torque. It's a, it's its own little twisty snap cap, and this to get the uh, the rest of it off. And what it does is it put constant pressure because there is a rubber O-ring in there, and the last thing you want is to get that kinked because you'll never get the uh, fuel filter to seal up if you do. One of the things that happens in this weather is you get a lot of metal fatigue and you got some bad parts, they're going to break. I had the uh, one of my DPF filter clamp bro broke. But luckily, always carry a ratchet strap and some coat hangers. I got it tied up and got it to a shop where I could get it fixed properly. Just a little hint. Always carry a ratchet strap and bungees. You'll be thankful you did. If you run refrigerated like I do, you're going to want to run it on continuous when it's that cold. Don't shut it off. You're going to need the return fuel to keep the bottom of the tank warm. That way it keeps feeding. The engine will stay warm itself inside this shroud, but the fuel's got a long ways to go. It basically has to go from the center of the trailer up it's going to get warmed by the engine and then return into the tank. True, it's going to cost you a, a few more dollars in diesel to run it on continuous. But that's a whole lot cheaper than a road call. And it's a whole lot cheaper than paying for a load that should have never been frozen. As we've discussed before, cold water leaks are a very real thing. So, you know where your truck's prone to leak from. And when it gets this cold, you're going to have a leak. Uh, it's pretty much a given, but it's not detrimental. Uh, just make sure you keep your antifreeze full, but cold water leaks, just look under your truck and you can do it from a distance away. I mean, if you can see the whole underside of your truck because it sits high enough, you'll see where there's water and you'll see where there shouldn't be water. And if there's water where there shouldn't be water, you might need to take a closer look. I was a little concerned about this for a minute, but then I noticed it, uh, it's all coming from there which is draining off the trailer so that's nothing to be worried about and on a closer look you can tell it's not antifreeze so we're good here when you come out of the cold like I did into the warm weather especially this time of year with all the fog the frost line is just a few miles that way uh, on the other side of the mountain you're going to uh, have a lot of condensation so keep an eye on it and you're also going to have a lot of melting snow and so just keep an eye on it and don't freak out when you see a puddle chances are it's just things condensing so as you see I'm missing a center pin this is the top of it as you see it's not welded all that well from the factory and it was cold and this thing had froze I gave that a yank and it popped uh, so Things break, things get brittle when it's really cold. I talk about saving money quite a bit, and this is where you're really going to save in the winter time. These are about a buck seventy-eight at Walmart a piece, minus twenty. Uh, make sure that didn't come off. You want the winter formula, and uh, you know, of course, my oil. That's twelve ninety-eight at Walmart, and that's oh, about the same. At a truck stop, it's about $20 a gallon for antifreeze, $20 to $25 a gallon for oil, and four and a half to $5 a gallon for washer fluid. Buy it in bulk when you're home, you'll save some money. A little more up front, but in the long run, you're doubling your investment here. And make sure you get plenty of washer fluid because you're going to go through it. That being said, you should always carry a couple of spare wiper blades too. You're going to need them. Things you should carry in your truck are just as important. Now, I'm not talking about all the stuff they always talk about, like you need food and water and first aid kit and a Labrador retriever and with a keg of brandy around its neck and all that. No, we're not talking about all that. Uh, just, just general items. 
and this isn't about getting stuck this is just about if you have to be outside the truck working on it you're gonna need a good serviceable set of coveralls these came in very handy the other day when I was lying in the snow trying to beat my tire loose an old coat you need an old coat not don't don't wear the good coat because you're gonna get it greasy you're gonna get it nasty and you don't want that stuff all over your driver's seat uh, get an old coat that's still serviceable don't make your new coat your old coat uh, you'll be grateful that you took this advice and of course fuel filters make sure you got the right ones uh, these should be under the bunk but they're not and uh, one other thing get yourself a little whisk broom with all the dirt and stuff out here right now and the rocks and the salt and all that you're gonna be tracking a lot of stuff into the truck if you can keep it by the driver's door the more the better because the last thing you want is a little bit of this is like grease you get just a little touch on this finger you could paint you could paint the world with it so just get yourself a little whisk broom and they sell little whisk brooms with little dust pans and the dust pan comes in handy from time to time so get yourself excuse me get yourself one of those and uh, you'll be thankful you did but also have a full size broom like you sweep out the uh, trailer with a regular whisk because you're probably going to need that to sweep snow off your catwalk if you get stopped and you're too heavy so a little word of advice you're going to need some cleaners simple green windex some armor all because as you see the windows are dirty and with that i recommend getting two different kinds of towels the shop towels are great but the all-purpose towels are pretty good too Having two different kinds of towels like this means you're not going to blow through the paper ones quite as fast. And you'll use less of the blue ones than you think. And it's kind of a win-win. So just do that. Oh, and with the uh, blue ones, get yourself a little waterless hand cleaner. And the uh, blue ones work great for that. So on a side note, cold weather Windex or uh, window cleaner it's also good when you have things that are stuck like padlocks and little things that need move. Keep a little bottle of that, maybe a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to help loosen up padlocks and things of that nature. Just a little tip. On a final note, get a bottle of Febreze. This truck's going to be shut up. And since I quit smoking, I smell more of my own can than I used to. I don't like that. Trucks that stay locked up when you're in and out, in and out, sleeping and sweating and driving in them, they tend to start stinking. Do your laundry, get a laundry bag, keep it all, uh, your dirty clothes all contained, wash your bedding regularly, and use Febreze because uh, a smoky truck from cigarettes smells a whole lot better than rancid butt smell. So, Febreze. In reality, these trucks just take maintenance, and winter does take a toll on everything. Just do your due diligence, watch what you're doing, and uh, just keep an eye on your equipment. Last Saturday wasn't a hard day. It was just time-consuming and irritating because anything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. But I did use the tools at hand to make sure the problem didn't get any worse. The fuel filter gauge, that saved me. Honestly, uh, had that thing, had I not had that gauge, I would have just had to wait till the check engine light came on. And by the time the check engine light comes on, it's almost too late. I watched the gauge. I saw it was getting higher. I got out. I checked. I realized that uh, it was uh, in a bad state. So I had all the tools, and I only had the truck shut off for maybe five minutes but in that five minutes I dropped about 50 to 60 degrees in engine temperature so you got to have all the tools and you have to have it ready to go um, I had spent a lot of money on treatment and all that but treatment wasn't the problem it was just ice there was just ice buildup in the fuel it, it just happens when you're going hot and cold hot and cold hot and cold it just couldn't dissipate it fast enough so Make sure you can keep all the water out of your tanks that you can. 
But aside from that, you know, with just mild inconveniences, this or that, when the reason it took me so long to get that uh, wheel loosened up was because you just don't want to go ham on things, especially when it's as cold. Because, you know, you pop the wheel loose, that's one thing. You break the you break something in there and you're just done so better to spend a little time be a little patient and get things done properly than go and break things and have two problems so just watch yourself winter sucks and this weekend supposed to be really really cold up north they got another uh, clipper coming in from canada and uh sioux falls is supposed to be minus 20 something so I have to get some number one and a little bit more treatment, which costs money, but it's a whole lot cheaper than a service call, especially up there at that time of year because everybody's going to gel up because they didn't take the proper precautions they should have. So watch yourself, have fun, and just don't let these things shake you. So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I hope your winter's going well. Spring's right around the corner, and we got some neat things planned. So, I appreciate it. See you next video.